I had to drive somewhere yesterday that I had never been before. Thank goodness I had a tool that could help me out and tell me every single turn that I needed to make to get to my destination. The GPS on my phone had a map that told me exactly where to go. Have you seen this before? GPS isn't magic. There are satellites working together orbiting the Earth that are constantly sending signals to our devices so we can find out where we need to go and realistically not ever have to get lost. There are people for their job that work together to build and test these satellites and eventually send them off up into space. Who would want to work on a project like this? Why is this job important? Find out what STEM career I am describing in this episode of the STEM Career Quest. Have you ever found yourself asking this question, what do I want to be when I grow up? Maybe you already have an answer to that. Maybe you don't. Both are okay. Welcome to the STEM Career Quest podcast, a show made for kids like you to help you build your dreams or even find new ones in science, technology, engineering, and math. Each week, hear captivating stories and interviews to explore the exciting world of STEM. Oh, and grown-ups and teachers, you can listen too. We'll talk to experts in STEM who are passionate about what they do in the real world and how they make a positive impact in their careers. Created and hosted by K-5 STEM coach Naomi Meredith, this show will spark your imagination and passion. Join us each week on our quest to explore the possibilities of careers in STEM one episode at a time. The STEM career that we are going to be hearing about today is what it is like being a spacecraft systems engineer at Lockheed Martin. Spacecraft engineers work together with different teams to build and test different spacecraft. To tell us more about it, we are going to be hearing from our special guest, Jessica Kennedy. As a child, Jessica was always interested in space, but it wasn't until college where she had a career day and learned about different opportunities that she could have for her own job. This opened up the possibilities of how she could use her skills in math and add on engineering, which led to her getting a position at the company that she now works for. This kicked off Jessica's amazing journey into being a spacecraft systems engineer. So excited for you to get to know Jessica and her awesome STEM job. Now, get ready for today's episode quest, my questies. As you listen, there are three questions I want you to find the answers to. At the end of the episode, the answers will be revealed. The questions are asked in order, but you do have to listen very carefully to get those answers. So let's jump in. Question number one. What are three different ways GPS can be helpful that Jessica tells us about? Question number two. What embarrassed Jessica one time when she met very important people at her job? And question number three, Jessica has worked with people who worked on which telescope? Be a careful listener. Now let's embark on our STEM career quest. Well, thank you so much, Jessica, for being here today on the STEM Career Quest podcast. If you wouldn't mind sharing with us, what is your STEM career and how would you describe what you do? Hey, Naomi, thanks for having me. Um, So my STEM career is um, I'm a systems engineer at Lockheed Martin. Um, So I work with design engineers on designing spacecraft and test engineers on testing spacecraft. Um, We have technicians who put together the spacecraft. And then systems engineers kind of get to work with all of those different parties and fill gaps and 
um, make sure the whole thing that gets put together works and um, performs how it's supposed to for um, our customer. That is so cool. I never knew that there were other places other than NASA that would actually work on spacecraft. So that's good to know that NASA isn't the only place you can do something like that. So, and NASA is actually one of our customers. So they um, will put us on contract to build something for them. So some of my friends work on the Orion space capsule that is going to send um, astronauts to the moon, right? And so NASA is saying, hey, here's what we need to do. It's very hard. Can you help us? Um, And some of my friends that I work with get to work on that space capsule. Well, that is really cool. You have friends in NASA. Look at your friends and you're collaborating all over the world. That is so amazing. (laughs) All right. So what would you say? So you do obviously work on some really, really cool projects. What are some of the coolest parts about your job? So the coolest part for me um, has been getting to actually touch spacecraft parts that are going to launch into space someday. So um, working on a GPS satellite. And so, um, I mean, some of you may know it in your car or your parents have it on their phone or it comes on in the car and helps them get from one place to another. Um, And that's a big mission for it. But it also helps with um, banks being able to keep time. It helps with optimizing farming equipment um, for doing their crops. Um, And then it also is used um, for uh, primarily for the military um, to help. And so getting to, you know, touch a part that went on that spacecraft and then seeing it, you know, launch in um, and start performing its mission and helping the military and, you know, people turn it on their GPS and I'm going, oh, I worked on one of those satellites that is up there um, helping you get to your doctor's appointment or, or wherever it is. That is so incredible and so important for technology to keep on growing and being used in such unique ways. I never, I mean, I knew about how GPS help us get to places, but those are some definitely some ways that most of us don't think about how GPS can be used in a lot of different things that we do in everyday life. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. And then for, you know, my friends who work on Orion to get to be able to say like, I worked on that thing that, you know, the is keeping the astronauts safe and is getting them home safe. Um, and then similarly, I've gotten to work with and talk to engineers who worked on the Hubble Space Telescope. I'm like, whoa, that is crazy. Because I've, you know, I grew up seeing those pictures and reading about Hubble and things like that. But I'm like, oh my gosh, this is, you know, someone who designed it or got to put a piece on that, just like I did on GPS. Wow, that is incredible. Living out almost childhood dreams in a little way. Just you never know. You get to meet the people you've looked up to. That's incredible. So along with that, with the Hubble telescope, do you have, I'm sure you have so many amazing things. You already have told us some amazing (laughs) projects that you've worked on. Anything that other things that have been amazing or something that shocked you? What other stories that do you have that have happened in your awesome STEM career? So I have kind of a a silly, embarrassing story um, that I think people will laugh at. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So um, when I um, was pregnant with my now seven-year-old, so he's in first grade and he just, he loves space too. And he, him and his sister fight over what their favorite rocket is. One of them likes an Atlas V and the other likes a Delta IV Heavy. Um, And then we watch launch videos too. So what their favorite part of a launch is, they argue about what the best part is. Um, So I'd encourage you, if you've never watched a launch before, they're easy to find um, on YouTube. So get with your mom and dad and um, go on and just find an Atlas V launch or a Falcon launch or Delta IV Heavy launch. Delta IV Heavies are the big ones and it's like three rockets. So those are pretty, pretty crazy to watch. Um, And you can watch it all up until um, the payload fairing um, comes off. So that's the little pieces that come off the side of the spacecraft. And so you can watch it for a pretty long way. Um, 
but so when I was pregnant with my my seven year old, um, I um, was cold a lot at work and um, I was uncomfortable. And so um, I would take my shoes off when I got to work and I had these big fluffy socks that I would change into um, that were black and white. Um, and I had to run into this other area sometimes because I worked in a bigger building and the, the spacecraft that we were building was um, in the room next door. And so I'd have to go back and forth quite a bit. Um, so I needed to run into the other area and I was questioning like, oh, should I should I take off my fluffy shocks and put on my dress shoes or not? Um, it was just going to be less than five minutes. So I decided to to run in there. Um, and so I went to the other area and opened the door and a bunch of really important people in my company and um, a a four-star general in the military, um, a very, very high up um, customer started coming out of the door. And so I'm just standing there holding this door open without any shoes on and these, you know, big, obnoxious, fluffy <laughs> socks on. Um, and one of them even commented about it. And I said, oh, oh, dear. Um, but I just decided to to roll with it and say, like, I'm so comfortable at work that <laughs> I can just... Um, Feel, feel at home here basically um and then the next um the next day um one of the people high up at my company they sent out an email about this um this general that came to visit and they said it, it was his first visit to see any of our products and he had a fantastic and i said oh great and he probably remembers this pregnant lady <laughs> wandering around in her socks holding the door open for everybody. So, um, but part of that is just like silly things are going to happen and embarrassing things are going to happen. And even when you're a grown up at work, you just kind of laugh with people and they're not trying to hurt you or make fun of you. You just kind of laugh and, and carry on and um, get back to work. <laughs> And then you lost your job. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> she did I definitely not. got teased about it. And I definitely <laughs> would put my shoes on after that. I'm like, I don't know who's going to be behind that door when I open it. So I'm just going <laughs> to go with it. See, kids, that's why your grownups at home tell you to put shoes on in public. So that's why. <laughs> <laughs> no shoes, no shirt, no service. Yep. <laughs> that's <Exactly>. so cute. <laughs> Three things about GPS you may or may not already know. GPS is short for Global Positioning Systems. There are a lot of satellites orbiting Earth working together to send those signals back to us to let us know where we are going. GPS first started in 1973 to be used for the military. It wasn't until 1983, 10 years later, where GPS was available for the public to use. Now, mind you, that type of GPS technology is different than what we are used to today, but you have to start somewhere, right? GPS can track volcanic activity, assess earthquakes, and even measure water levels in nature, and many more. Who knew that a tool that tells us where to go can have other capabilities? Did you know these three things about GPS? Maybe you did. Maybe you didn't, but pretty cool, right? Loving the STEM Career Quest podcast and want more? Join the STEM Career Quest Club, perfect for teachers, homeschool parents, or families looking to add more educational opportunities during school breaks. Inside, you get access to a private community of other STEM Career Quest listeners comprehension guides for each episode, teaching slides for each episode where it is broken up into chunks so you can listen in smaller segments, related STEM activities you can complete with simple materials, one monthly virtual STEM field trip, and more. Join the club at stemcareerquestpodcast.com slash club. Well, when it comes to your life experiences, you did mention you looked up to the people who worked on the Hubble t 
telescope. But were there any other experiences that led you into this career? How did you get to what you're doing today? Yeah. So growing up, I was interested in space um, and um, never really thought about engineering. Um, I was good at math, but didn't know what I would do with that. Um, I had some really great teachers and then my parents that really fostered um, my knowledge in math. And then um, I had siblings that were good at math too. And so um, they really helped me grow and see that it was not just a a day-to-day thing to get by that I could actually really do something important um, with my my skill set and then um, working hard to get better at it. Um, and so in in college, I decided to um, get a math degree, again, still not knowing what I was going to do with it. Um, and I had a class where they brought in different uh, people from different careers um, to say what they did and what they liked and what was difficult about their jobs or what um, kind of possibilities there were in it and maybe um, what the outlook looked like for um, hiring for those kinds of careers. Um, and so that's where I really got some more information on, wow, that's that one is maybe something I would never want to do and sounds like it would be awful. Um, and other ones that Um, seemed more interesting. Um, And that's where I had never really thought of engineering prior to that. Um, But was like, oh, you know, a lot of engineering is math, and maybe I could do something with that. Um, And then my friend's dad worked um, at Lockheed Martin, where I work. And um, he just kind of told me that your passion for space and your ability for math could be a really good fit here um, and told me a little more about what he did. Um, and then I I got an internship there while I was in college and then um, started in a job there um, after I graduated. So I was very fortunate that it just kind of seemingly lucked out a little bit. Um, but when I was young, I didn't really think about careers in space because um, I just kind of thought about, oh, do I want to be an astronaut or not? Maybe that's not for me. <laughs> um, but I didn't realize all of the other support functions like putting together a spacecraft or something that help enable those people who want to be astronauts um, advance science and um, their missions. That is so amazing how being exposed to other STEM careers and just pushing together all of your passions just led to this amazing pathway that you have today. And with any type of career out there, there's so many different possibilities and ways that people work together to make things happen. And like you said, with space, It's not just the astronauts. There are so many people behind the scenes to make that one small part actually go. And astronauts are always the only thing going in space anyway, like you said, with satellites and GPS um, and telescopes and all sorts of things exploring. So that's so amazing that you had that STEM career exposure, kind of like this podcast, but in real life in your experience. Yeah, that's why this podcast is really exciting because I didn't get something like that until I was 18 years old, right? And and it's very, um, I'm very fortunate that I had the fostering and the encouragement in math up until that point so I could kind of choose when I got to that. Um, but someone um, watching your podcast may say, ooh, I really like that. And maybe I can work harder in this area to be able to do that someday. Yeah, absolutely. So for anybody out there who heard about your career, they say, this is so amazing. I want to explore this some more. What advice do you have for kids who might want to do something similar to your career? Um, I would say work hard in math and science in school. And um, if you're good at it, don't just settle for completing your assignments and, you know, maybe being one of the best in the class, but really um, s- still push yourself to to learn. And if you're not getting that in class, um, maybe through after school activities um, or things like Again, watching rocket launches on YouTube or um, just reading about satellites and rockets in books, too, can really um, 
give you some more knowledge about where you, what part of it, where you might um, be interested in not, um, and participating in STEM clubs and robotics competitions. A lot of schools now um, do robotics competitions. And um, one of the things some of my friends have worked on is, um, and if you go to some museums, um, like the one here in Denver has a, a museum of nature and science, but they have a rover um, and so that's a robot, right, that we launched onto Mars to try to um, find what Mars is like and if there was ever water there. Um, and there was recently, just a couple months ago, we had sent a robot to an asteroid to get a sample of the asteroid to try to tell us about the early um, forming of the universe, right? And so that sample just got sent back um, last uh -huh. month here. Um, so just, just be curious, I guess, um, and reach out and, and read. And even as early as high school, um, you can start internships at companies like mine and see if that's something that you're really interested in and want to pursue in college. That is excellent advice. And I think that all the kids out there can definitely explore those things and being here listening is definitely a great start in the right direction to explore all the different possibilities of what you can be when you grow up. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jessica, for being here. And I appreciate your time very, very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me and really jazzed about this idea. And we can't wait to watch. My kids are excited to, <laughs> to watch. Yay. <laughs> Hope you have been listening carefully to today's episode quest. Let's see how you did with those three questions. Question number one was, what are three different ways GPS can be helpful that Jessica tells us about? She told us about some pretty cool ways. First, we learned that farmers can use GPS to help them when they're planting their crops. She also told us that GPS is used in the military and helps them with their missions. And of course, she also talked about how GPS helps people get to different places every day. Question number two. What embarrassed Jessica one time when she met very important people at her job? She didn't have any shoes on her feet. She was a bit uncomfortable at the moment and instead had some big fluffy socks. Well, unexpectedly, she had to meet some very important higher up people in her company and it was a little bit embarrassing. Funny, but embarrassing at the time. And question number three. Jessica has worked with people who worked on which telescope? Some of the people that she have worked with have worked on the Hubble Space Telescope, which crazy enough, we learned about the Hubble Space Telescope back in episode four. Want help following along with these questions? Make sure to join the STEM Career Quest Club where you will have access to these questions for every single episode, listening comprehension guides, related STEM activities, and more. Make sure to check out the link in the show notes where you can join and be the ultimate STEM questie. Loving the STEM Career Quest podcast? Want to be featured on the show? Leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and tell us what you love about it. Maybe you'll be featured on our next episode. What is something new that you learned today about being a spacecraft systems engineer? Is this the type of STEM career that you want to learn more about? Even if it isn't, it is still great to learn and discover more about the amazing things that people do in our world and make things run. Excited for you to continue your journey with us here on the STEM Career Quest podcast. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for listening to today's episode of the STEM Career Quest podcast. Grab your free episode badge, connect with today's guests, follow us on social media, join the club, and more. 
find it all on our website at stemcareerquestpodcast.com.